Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie tells the story of Martin and Johan, two Swedish journalists. They have come to Africa, to demonstrate the involvement of the Swedish political elite in armed conflicts, over oil exploitation in the Ogaden. This is a region of Ethiopia where the government is trying to oppose oil extraction. Martin and Johan plan to enter Ogaden by bypassing official channels. They arrive in neighboring states, and wait for a signal from the rebels, who have agreed to help them. Martin films their journey with an action camera, and Johan takes pictures with his camera. While waiting for the ferry to Ogaden, they enjoy playing soccer with the African rebels. Johan shows them the snus, the tobacco one can put under the lip. The rebels are surprised, because they have never seen such a thing. One of the rebels offers Johan his AK-47, but he doesn't want to take it. Nevertheless, he does so reluctantly, so as not to seem rude. Martin takes pictures of him, while he holds the weapon and pretends to shoot. The two have loved ones waiting for them at home. Martin has a young wife in Sweden, while Johan's family also awaits his return. One day, they discover that the Swedish foreign minister, Carl Bildt is involved in the conflict over oil exploitation. Officially, the minister has no connection with the oil company that is developing the field, but there is a secret report, that shows he is aware of the company and the armed conflicts that followed. Martin takes the secret report on a flash drive, and starts looking for information about the oil company. Soon, Martin and Johan take an interview with two local women. They say that they were imprisoned and abused by rebel soldiers. When the reporters ask why the soldiers are fighting, the women confirm that it is for oil. One night, Martin discovers that the oil company is checking his blog after he visits their site. They are initially frightened, but that day, Martin receives a phone call, telling him that they will be transported to the Ogaden. This means it is a risky trip, but they will have a chance to demonstrate the involvement of Sweden's political elite in armed conflicts. The next morning, they pack their bags and prepare to leave. They get into a car, and arrive at the Ethiopian border, where they board another car that will take them to the rebels. They drive late into the night and, at one point, get chased by what appears to be the rebels. For a moment, the driver manages to evade the rebels, but then he hits an antelope, and the car breaks down. The driver grabs his weapon, and then runs away immediately. In the darkness, armed men approach. They reveal themselves to be the rebels who were to accompany them on the trip. The commander tells the reporters to get their things and follow them. The rebels take them to a village, and show them the horrors the military has done. The commander explains that the rebels attacked the military, and the latter slaughtered an entire village to avenge their attack. Martin talks to a rebel, and the man says that during prayers, they pray to God to take back the oil he gave them, because without it, there would be no such wars. The rebels state that long ago, peace reigned on these lands, but since oil was discovered, conflicts have begun. Afterwards, they continue walking toward Ogaden. During one of their stops, a sudden gunfight breaks out. The rebels run away as the military approaches. Martin raises his hands, but is shot in the shoulder. In the process, Johan continues to run, but gets shot in the arm. He takes off his shirt to show that he is white. The military then surrounds the reporters, and films them with their phones. They treat the journalists' wounds, and take them to the vice president of the region, Virar. He claims that he saved them from rebels, but the journalists try to explain that he is wrong. Virar tries to get the journalists to admit that they entered the country illegally, along with members of a terrorist organization, but the journalists don't play along. A man named Hussein films all the conversations, to make the journalists look bad. That evening, the military and journalists sit around the fire. Martin asks them to call the embassy, but Virar says the phones are not working now, and they can call tomorrow. Martin and Johan are terrified, and fear they will be killed. The next day, Virar shows the video they shot to his superiors. Nevertheless, they are not satisfied with the video, and demand a version in which the journalists admit that they entered the country illegally. Next, we see how a military doctor treats Johan's very serious arm wound. Hussein approaches Johan and offers him water to drink. Hussein advises him to do what Virar says, and everything will be fine. The journalists are again taken to the desert, and Virar forces them to admit that they entered the country with the help of the rebels, otherwise, he's gonna kill them. To scare them off, the military initially takes Martin to one side, and shoots in the air. The intimidation is successful, and he says what Virar wants to hear. He points out that what Virar has just done is internationally illegal, and the latter laughs. Next, the military gets Martin and Johan on board the trucks. As a soldier sings through the walkie-talkie, Martin yells to Johan that he is alive. Johan, who is in the other truck, shouts that he is alive as well. Virar allows Martin to call his wife, 
who begins to cry when he hears the voice of his beloved. He tells her not to believe the news report, and asks her to contact the embassy. Their detention is made public, but the news reports merely say that Johan and Martin are allegedly involved in a terrorist organization, and are being treated well. Meanwhile, the reporters are taken to a prison, and locked up in different cells. When Martin is called in for questioning, the investigator puts his belongings on the table, and begins showing Martin's camera footage of Johan posing with a weapon. Ethiopian authorities use this footage as evidence of the journalist's involvement in terrorist activities. To an inexperienced person, it may look like Johan was learning to shoot, plus he was carrying tobacco in baggies, that the police thought were drugs. When the investigator gets distracted, Martin takes the flash drive with the secret report from the table, and hides it in his pocket. Once in the cell, he hides the flash drive in a bar of soap. Johan's arm is still badly injured, a doctor takes care of him and gives him pills. Later, he is transferred to Martin's cell. The two have not seen each other for two weeks, and embrace happily. Later that evening, Martin reveals to Johan that he stole the flash drive with the secret report. This flash drive is their last hope of exposing the Swedish foreign minister. The next day, the Swedish ambassador and his assistant arrive at the prison, and tell the reporters that there is going to be a trial, where Martin and Johan better not talk about politics, otherwise, they could go to prison for 20 years. They must not say anything that could make the Ethiopian government look bad. Soon, the two receive clean clothes, and are taken to the preliminary hearing. Before they get into the car, the ambassador tells them that he has already bought tickets to Sweden, and that everything will be fine. However, during the trial, they are declared terrorists, and sent to a rehabilitation center, where they will await trial. Meanwhile, Hussein continues to film for the military. When people complain about the injustices and illegalities of the military, he realizes that he is on the wrong side. Some time later, Martin and Johan are taken to a rehabilitation center that turns out to be a prison, a small fenced-in area, where prisoners are locked up. Soon, the reporters realize that the place is hell, and the other prisoners are anything but friendly. In prison, they befriend a guy named Chala. He explains how things work here, and advises them not to trust anyone. Meanwhile, Swedish television begins to show the Swedish foreign minister in an unfavorable light. The reporters link his name to an oil company operating in Ethiopia, but he denies it. Next, Hussein discovers that his friend has disappeared after admitting the brutality of the Ethiopian government. Thus, he decides to leave the country, but first he must get his family out of the country. A few days later, relatives visit Martin and Johan. Martin gives his wife the flash drive with the secret report, and asks her to publish it when he gives the signal. Before the trial, the ambassador again warns the journalist not to talk about politics, because it will complicate the relations between Sweden and Ethiopia and the case. Only then will they be released. At the trial, the prosecution presents Martin's edited footage to the court, to give the impression that the journalists had gone to Ogaden to fight. Martin and Johan try to explain that they were not involved in terrorist activities, and were simply using rebel services to infiltrate Ogaden. However, the prosecution wins, and the court sentences the journalist to 11 years in prison. After the trial, the ambassador returns to see them, and tells them that the politicians appreciated the journalists during the trial, and that they did not make the oil company's situation public. The authorities are ready to release them, but only if they admit their guilt, and sign a petition for pardon. They have a choice between appealing and waiting more than a year for a new trial, or renouncing their journalistic principles and bowing to the dictatorial regime. If they appeal, there is no guarantee that they will be released, in fact, there is a risk that they will receive a harsher sentence after the appeal, but they don't believe in a pardon either, since they have been deceived more than once. The ambassador's assistant lets them know that Sweden is improving relations with Ethiopia in many areas, and that the government doesn't want to take risks for two journalists, which is why it has not intervened so far. After some time, the Swedish foreign minister visits them, and says he has met with Ethiopian politicians, and that there is a good chance that they will be released after signing a clemency appeal. However, the minister gives no guarantees. Nevertheless, they agree to apply for clemency. Realizing that they will not last a year in prison, because of the terrible things they have done, they sign a petition, and give an interview. But even after all this, they remain in prison. They realize that they have been deceived once again. Meanwhile, Hussein prepares to leave the country, and sends his family abroad. Next, he copies the Ethiopian regime's compromising files onto a hard drive, to help the journalists. An Ethiopian TV news report paints Martin and Johan as terrorists. Their speeches are edited, to make it appear that they have confessed to terrorism. After watching the news report, the other prisoners insult and behave aggressively with them. 
So Hussein goes to the Swedish embassy, and shows a tape in which the military taunts the journalists, and beats them into confessing. Hussein gives the hard drive to the Swedish ambassador, and asks him to publish this evidence that the journalists are innocent on the internet. One day, Chala approaches and tells them that they are free to go, but the journalists don't believe it first. However, they are convinced that this is not a joke, and the two are released for real. But they don't stop being afraid until the plane takes off, they believe the authorities may reverse course, and they will be imprisoned again. Happily, they return home to their loved ones, safe and sound. It is revealed that Hussein obtained a residence permit in Sweden, but for a long time, he lived under a false identity. The oil company was discovered to be in violation, and withdrew from Ethiopia. The country's politics changed after the high-profile case, and the authorities became more transparent. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.